Hi everyone, welcome to the next video in this series from Hannah Carlson's Grains of Gold, also in her Seasons book. Um, this picture, Grains of Gold, is a compilation book, so um, most of the pictures are in other books, not all of them. Um, and I'm using Castle Arts Gold pencils. Um, I have a swatch chart available in my Kofi shop. I don't have any comparison charts apart from two Castle Art soft touch. So if you want some, let me know and I can put some together for you. It takes me a little while. Sometimes, sometimes I can do it quickly. Right, we're going to do our um, pretty little girl or lady girl. I think she's a girl um, today. Um, we're going to do her face and arms first, her sort of skin. Um, there we go. So I'm having a look at what we have got in our Castle Arts Gold because I've not done a skin tone before. I think I'm going to start with the Cadmium Orange Light. Where is it? There. And it sounds like it's orange, but I think from my swatches it looks a little bit more skin tony. I'm just going to use it really lightly. I always start off skin quite light, um, even if I'm doing a dark skin, which I've done a couple of times, um, which I do enjoy doing, but I haven't practiced enough to do with you confidently enough on uh, on video. But uh, I, I have to say, I think um, darker skin is very, very pretty. But this young lady, not only has she got freckles, so she looks paler and um, I, uh, as I say, I feel a bit more confident doing a paler colour. So this is quite an orangey colour, as we would expect from the title. So we've done a layer of this. It's very pale, as I've said. I like to start lightly and sort of just gently build up. Um, I am going to use the hmm, apricot light, I think. Just going to give it a sharpen for for defining a few areas that I think would be a little bit darker. So here's our apricot light. So it's obviously still not a really dark colour. But let's have a look at the neck. The neck is what part I tend to find easiest. We have some shadow here on the edges of our neck, there and there, but also under the chin. Now the shadow wouldn't necessarily be in this sort of colour. It might. It'd be more natural to be sort of in a grey but I tend to draw it in in this colour first so we're going either side of the nose where it would be darker and underneath a little bit and then the nose and then down there the nose starts to stand out a little bit more and then I tend to leave a little white mark at the bottom along the little jawline and then we need to sort of not go all the way to the chin because there'd be a bit that sort of sticks out a little. And then also I think the cheekbones would be a little bit lighter. So I tend to try and leave those a bit paler. Although some people like to do a little blush on the cheeks. I find it's better to leave them pale. It gives them more shape. So there we go. We've got a little bit of... Um, sort of structure into her face and now her arms so I'm thinking the edges might be a little bit darker like that and on the edges of all her fingers the fingers are good trying fingers is so hard try and fit the right amount of fingers into this right size of space Husband's always saying that. He says, you can understand why I like cartoon characters things have three fingers, because it just seems to work better. And you're trying to draw it. Okay. So now I'm going to go for a more of a shadowy colour. Now I would often um, think about using a grey or a, um, a grey or a purple. What I'm actually going to use from this set, having just looked at my swatch chart, is the Venetian Blue. This is a grey purple and I think it will work well for shadow. So under the chin here, I'm going to put a fair bit under there. I should be shadowing her neck like that. And you see that starts to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional, like her head isn't attached all the way to her 
neck as it were there's a gap I mean obviously her head is on her neck but oh I'm not am I making any sense <laughs> a bit of dark at the back too there we go now also just under her mouth under her nose there there'd be some shadow and either side of her nose often under the eyes is quite dark especially if you're me <laughs> and then along the edge of the hairline a bit more shadow it's a very good color i have to say i'm really pleased with how it's working and then where we did these edges of the arms too down here in between the fingers there'd be a bit of shadow just what I'm trying to draw away in here, this is a great colour I think I said that already too many times <laughs> and then along the edge of here okay okay now what we can do now is use a little bit of pinker shade so I'm looking at the pink balloon here we go and I'm going to work on these arms a little bit more now just want to bring the colour in a little bit so they don't look quite so pale there we go Just drawing the colour in from the edges, really. And then the same with our neck. So I leave a bit of a lighter area still. Make sure when you're doing this on the face that you leave a bit of light for the cheekbone. But on the nose, I'm going to put a little bit so the very edge is a bit whiter. But under the eyebrow. she is she'll look better I also often find the face looks a bit odd when I first finish it it looks too dark but once I put the hair in then it sits back so I want a sort of um, blondish what am I going to use I think I'm going to use the terracotta light first um, there we go for her hair. It's just going to have a sort of yellowish brownish base and then I use some darker colours on it after. It looks like it's tied up there. You could do that a little tight bit in hair colour because some people wrap their own hair around itself to tie it up. I've uh, never been able to quite work out how to do that. I'm just trying to look there and work out what's hair and what isn't I think we're there like that yeah I've never um, been able to do that with my hair I can use a pencil to tie my hair up I've always got one to hand so my hair my hair's quite short at the moment actually since I've had it cut it's too short really to tie up I think I've never tried it doesn't get on my wick I do the eyebrows as well um, but um, I used to just turn it into a knot and then stick a pencil through the knot to hold it in place um, it's quite good it works quite well I tend not to use a colouring pencil for that though because then I want it I've got, well, I always want it once it's in my hair I usually use a graphite pencil but do be careful if you try it because um, you can gouge it into your head if you're not careful, where you sort of, because you've got your ball of hair and you want to go through that and then down into the hair that's underneath and back out to sort of hold it in place. I'm using this yellow ochre, which is a little bit darker for some of the areas of hair. Um, yes, and I have scratched my head with the um, with a sharp pencil before. What I'm doing here is I'm going to do the ends of the hair a little bit darker to start trying to make it look like the light and shade in it which gives it a little bit more shape and shadow um, 
and then looks more interesting because you've got a mix of colour. to think if I was going to get any time to do any more of this tomorrow because I think I'm just going to make this one do for today for me I mean obviously for you you're only getting one anyway um, today but um, I've uh, got my cleaning to do tomorrow and Skype and things um, I'm going to go quite dark next I'm going to go for the sun. I'm making a really good decision. The walnut brown, so we're going dark. We're going to put in the shadows of the hair, okay. Let's go right down into this parting to start with. It'd be dark in there, although some ladies have quite a white parting. If they're uh, waiting for their hair to be dyed. I used to dye my hair, it's such a so high maintenance though, you know, as it starts to grow out, should you use a temporary dye before you get it re-dyed permanently or re-dye it yourself, or, yeah, I just don't bother anymore. And actually my hair it seems to have stopped going white, it's, I've just got this sort of a white bit at the front. Um, yeah. Although when I drop pairs about the place, you know, they all seem to be white because they drop on my. I usually wear a dark top like I am today, so they show up. But uh, anyway, when I when I get the hair out of the shower, it's usually dark, and I know it's mine. Now her eyes are very tricky, they're very small, so um, someone was saying to me they coloured in some eyes on something and it looked a little bit strange, it can really do. Now I'm going to use my black, this is the ivory black, to do the very centre of the eyes to start with. There we go, and then we need to do the um, the irises. I'm thinking she could have a nice brown eyes, although she's got ginger hair. Doesn't really go with brown eyes, but never mind. Um, what should we use? I think I'd quite like to use the burnt umber. It's really quite dark. You need to sharpen it really carefully because I don't want it to go outside of the lines that are drawn for the iris because. Uh, Otherwise, it will be too big. I'm going to take this quite slowly and carefully. <sighs> and what I noticed I've done is I've actually coloured in the whites of her eye with pink on that side. So I'm going to find my white pen, my finest one. Got so many white pens here, and another one I want. Two eights, two tens. What I want is a five. I don't have one, I'm gonna to have to do it with an eight and hope it works. There we go. Jelly roll eight. And what I want is to fill in that white eye there. I'm going to do the white on the other side as well, and a tiny bit of white inside the eye too, so it looks shiny. It doesn't quite, didn't quite come off perfectly, but it'll do. Now I haven't done her lips. Now her lips are quite fun, when you've got a large pair of lips to colour, you've got a lot to play with. Um, but this, these are quite small, I'm just going to grab my light peach and do them, I need to sharpen. I'm not going to worry about light and shade because they're so teeny tiny. I'm going to fill them in 
You might want them to be quite dark, but I'm just keeping them fairly light. Right. Now, time to do her um, rest for Let's have a look at her clothing. So, we have got... Well, it's a dress, isn't it? So, I want, the, want her clothes to sort of work with the background a little bit. So I'm thinking I might do the dress in marigold, which is a kind of pale orange. So I'm just going to start colouring a base for the dress. I always think it's quite useful if you're not sure of how you're going to apply your shading to something to do a base colour first. Because not only does that give you somewhere to start with regards to colour, it also helps you, you start to look, as you're colouring, you're thinking, well, you can look at where it might be lighter and darker, you know, where on the edges of the arms or near the arms, around the bag, there might be some shadow, around the um, scarf, that sort of thing. So it just gets you thinking. And kind of colour over all the buttons with the same colour. Sometimes that happens with clothes, the buttons are identical. But if we decide to change the colour, we can just put it on top of what we've done already. And then this bit of the dress. And the clothes are quite interesting to colour. It might not be something that you colour that often, to be honest. I did a lot of clothing when I was colouring in Rooms of Wonder. Sounds just sneezing. Um, and some of it was easier than others, I shall have to say. But uh, this, we can make this quite easy to start with. There we go. Now I'm going to keep the same colour in my hand and add in a bit of definition. See here, our dress has a crease. I'm going to draw in and here look. So this bit is sticking further forward than this bit, and this bit sort of creased in two. I think this would be slightly darker, just here and here, and in the middle. Also think it would be a bit dark here on the waist where it's gathered. And now I'm thinking about the edge of this arm here. There'd be a bit of a shadow going down there. I need to sharpen this up and under the scarf. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a tickle suddenly appeared in my throat. Ooh. Probably a sign that I need to drink or need to stop. I am going to make this, as I say, my last video of the day. I sort of like to do both sides of the arm a little bit because it gives it the arm a bit more shape. Okay, so that's the sort of start. Oh, sorry, I've got to get a tissue, a handkerchief. Oh, I'm going to use the cadmium orange deep to put a few more even darker areas in. I think some of these shadows might be better off in a sort of grey rather than in this sort of orange, darker orange. We can put them in after. I'm just going to go back to my marigold and just tidy it up a bit. So I think either side of the creases there might be a little bit of colour down the edge, maybe a bit more. There we go. Sorry, 
way, not much talking, more concentrating. Now I'm going to use a much lighter orange. I'm thinking tangerine. Mm. I'm just going to pop it on here so you can see what I'm picking. I'm picking the seeing whether these. I think the cadmium orange light might be the best. Oh you know, to sort of fill in all over so that we have got less white paper showing through. It's just a matter of scribbly scribbly all over the place. We've got a few lines showing and I think that's okay. Looks like there might be some sort of weave in the fabric, something like that. and then oh, we need to think about some shadows oh let's just pop this pencil away um, I am thinking that maybe um, a little bit of brown for our shadowing maybe the sepia might work quite well where are you sepia there you are give you a sharpen So here is the sepia, and we're going in here. That's right, and then here. I also want to do a little bit along the side of here because I feel this might be slightly raised off the dress a little bit. And then shadow under the bag. And then just to the left of these lines. And the right of this one. There we go. Now what I'm going to also do with the sepia is do one of the stripes of the tights. And you can see make it darker on each end, a bit lighter in the centre join it up though, it doesn't, we don't want to make it look metallic but it will help to give the legs a shape which you might, which makes the legs look less flat which I think helps to make the picture look a little bit more interesting um, hmm, I don't know which way to go, I think I'll start with this one make sure that your lighter area lines up on each bit, that's why I struggled a bit with this one done on that bit. Now I think I'm going to match this in with her scarf as well. Make it slightly darker here, a bit less towards the centre. And then um, I think a little bit darker at the bottom. Like that. So this isn't what I would consider to be a sepia colour. But it's still, it works well for this purpose. A bit of darker there, so it looks slightly shadowy. There we go. Now for her other bit of tights, I'm going to use, I'm going to go back to my oranges and use the Cadmium Orange Deep. I'm going to do exactly the same as we did with the sepia though and just fade it towards the middle. 
I think her tights would match her dress. So I think this will work out nicely. And then I'm thinking what to do. I think her boots I might like to do in rather a orangey brown, but darker. I'm not sure what I've got. Have a look. And maybe match her bag the same colour. I think, yeah, either the walnut brown light. Um, yes, I'm, that's what I'm going to use. The walnut brown light. Is that what we use for the bar? I don't know. Mm. Just sharpen it. I don't think it is what we use for the bar. I don't know, it might be. We're going to put it on quite hard with the boots. I want to leave a bit of shine because they're like ultra shiny leather, is my thought. It's got the sort of line. Now, I did wonder whether to do the laces in a um, orange. You know, to match the dress. No, I'm not sure. I think it would work. But I'm going over them now with this colour. Whoops. one in the back it needs to be quite dark there we go and the handbag thinking we'll put a bit of shine by making it dark top and bottom um, I'm not sure which part of our bag would be dark or lighter so I'm just covering all of it and I'll have a think Maybe this bit would be darker. Put a bit of shadow underneath the uh, flap part. There we go. There we go. Now, we didn't do the buttons on the dress. We haven't done our laces. Maybe. Um, hmm. Maybe terracotta. Just a bit darker. So you stand out. So terracotta. And our hair ribbons. That's good, because I was thinking, I was going to do them orange, but I thought they get lost in her hair. But the shoes are quite loose, aren't they? They're not tied up. Now we're going to do a little bit of black. Um, the ivory black because we need to do the soles of her boots. I figure they'd be black. And the aglets. No, eyelets. Sorry, the aglets are the end of the lace with the bit of plastic round. That's just the eyelet. I'm going to use this black. A bit of shadow in the here where there's some overlap around there and, there. and same here, this one here, just on the edge. I think it'd be a little bit darker 
Oh, I'm burning up again. <laughs> I'm going to get a cold drink, I think, in a second. It might be darker around the edge of the tights as well. Just around there. And where the dress hangs over. There we go. Um, yeah, I think that's enough. It's taken a while. But there she is, all done. So let's come out with that. Ooh. There you are, there she is. Hopefully she will stand out in the centre of the picture. Yes, her boots are the same colour as the path. I'm pretty sure. But I can put some shadow under them or darken the path if I think it needs it. But I will wait. Um, I think it's okay because of the shine that I put on her boots to make them look shiny leather and the fact that I put the colour on a bit darker. But we'll wait and see um, how that looks at the end. I think by the time the cat's done and everything, I think it will work, but we'll see. But that's me for today. Um, thank you very much for watching. I um, hope you have a really super day and happy colouring. <laughs>